the text that I believe God has laid upon my heart for tonight comes from 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. And I'd like to read from the last two verses and then into the first two verses of chapter 4. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18 and 4, 1 and 2. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit. Therefore, since we have this ministry as we received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. This particular passage kind of is the concluding argument, if you will, that Paul is making to the church at Corinth. The church, as we look at all the letters that have been written, was certainly not the kind of church that had the bursting of the Spirit where they had purpose and presence of God. As we look through Corinthians, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, we find that the writers are egging the people to come back to some kind of understanding of, of who they are in Christ and what kind of a witness they need to have. And it seems like there's been a movement away from that first outpouring of the Holy Spirit on that day of Pentecost. And once again here, Paul is telling them a few things. He's saying the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And then he goes on to say that we are being changed from glory unto glory. And then that we don't have to lose heart. And then says that we need to renounce any bit of shame that we carry with us. Paul is actually in this, from this passage, alluding to Moses, isn't it? As we can see when he talks about, for we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. When we look just before these verses, we see that he is, he's talking about in verse 13 or 12, therefore having such a hope, we use great boldness in our speech and are not like Moses, who used to put a veil over his face so that the sons of Israel would not look intently at the end of what was fading away. If you remember, in Exodus chapter 34, this is the second time that Moses is coming down with the tablets, the commandments of God. And as he comes down, he has spent days up there with God. When he comes down, the people of Israel run to see him. They're so happy to see him. And all of a sudden, they stop in fear. They cannot go any further because his entire countenance is shining. His skin is shining. And the glory of God is upon him. And they can't face it. And then Moses has a veil that he covers himself so that they can see him. And then slowly, the glory begins to fade. And then he's able to talk to the people. And Paul here is saying, this glory unto glory, the first glory as he talks about is the old covenant, the covenant that was based in the law. And the law had this momentary glory that only faded when the law was broken. And it's symbolized in this picture of Moses coming down with the law. And he says, but in this new dispensation that is rooted and grounded in Jesus, where there is grace, this glory will never fade. 
The other part of it is that the glory came upon, but in this glory, the glory is from within. And so he says, as you move into this new place, then there are four things that belong to you as sons and daughters of the Most High God that I believe are crucial, beloved, for you and I as we move into the year 2024. Four things that I believe are critical for us if we are to make sure that the year 2024 is a year that is filled with the joy of the Lord being our strength. The first thing that he says is that there will be liberty. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The spirit of the Lord is in you. We all know that. And because the spirit of the Lord is in you, beloved, nothing can shackle you. Nothing. And if there is a shackle today, it's something that you allowed that can be broken tonight. I don't know whether there are some of you who are sitting, sitting here who say, I'm caught up in this bondage. I'm caught up in this net. I can't break out of this. There is liberty, beloved, for you tonight because you are in Christ Jesus. Are you with me? There's liberty for you. There's no need for you to enter into the year 2024 under bondage to anything. Because you are a child of the living God. And the Bible says, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, the Spirit of the Lord is in you. There is liberty. And so, beloved, I, te I tell you this evening, look within your heart. Ask yourself the question, what is it that shackles me this evening? What is it that has shackled me all of these days? What is it that has caught me in a quagmire for, the, for most of 2023 or even before that? What is it that cripples me? And then take this verse, beloved, and say, I will not be crippled. I will not be held in bondage. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, and the Spirit of the Lord is in my heart, speak that with authority and say, I break the bond that holds me. For in Christ Jesus, I have liberty today. Take a moment. Take a moment. Just close your eyes if you want and think. Is there something that holds you in bondage tonight? Don't, don't walk into 2024 with it. This is your opportunity to say, Lord Jesus... I bring your word before you, Lord, and I claim the promise of this word. Will you break this bondage? Close your eyes, beloved. Pray whatever the Holy Spirit is bringing and saying, you've been in bondage to this for too long. Ask God to bring liberty to you tonight. I'll wait. I'll wait. And may I remind you that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen? Amen. You can do better than that. Amen. Amen. Truly. Secondly, in verse 18, he says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit. We are being transformed from glory unto glory. How does that happen? Paul states it very clearly here. As we behold, like as if it's a mirror, we behold the glory of God. 
as we spend time in his presence, as we become aware of him in every circumstance in our lives, as we gaze upon his face, and the glory of the Lord begins to then come upon us. God's glory then comes and begins to change us. It's a transformative process. It's something that happens continuously from glory unto glory. And it happens by gazing into the face of God. I was li listening to Martin Lloyd-Jones, famous preacher, and he said sometimes, he said, he says, the only thing that distinguishes us as Christians from anybody else is the fact that we tag on church to our lives. <clears throat> That's a kind of an ouch, isn't it? The only thing. <laughs> Thank you. The only thing that distinguishes us from anybody else is that on Sundays, we come to church. And he says the thing that should distinguish us from other people is that they see the glory of the Lord on your countenance and mine. The glory of the Lord should be upon our faces because we have gazed on the glory of God. That's how powerful this particular verse is that as we gaze on the face of God, God's glory begins to get poured out upon us. And then we shine in this new dispensation. That is what is required. Moses went up Mount Sinai to get that same experience. You and I can gaze on the face. How, how do we do that? How do we do that? How do we gaze on the face of God? Well, three ways very quickly. That you turn to God in every situation. That God is not the crisis person. That God is not the problem solver. God is the one who walks with you day in and day out. That you're constantly in the presence of God. There's a constant awareness that you and God are in sync together. That you wake up in the morning and you wish him. That you get ready and you say, well, Lord, walk with me as I go. I've got difficult, a difficult day ahead of me. Lord, would you show me? Thank him <clears throat> when he does. There's a constant communion between him and you. Secondly, remove every veil that would prevent that would hide him from you. Remove every veil that would hide him from you. Trouble, things that you are hurt with, anger, anything that allows a veil to come between you and God, make sure it's removed. And then thirdly, only try and reflect his glory. Only try and reflect his glory. What are the things that would showcase God in your life? Do that. From glory unto glory. Think about it, church. How wonderful it would be, isn't it, if we walked around the streets of Mumbai with the glory of God on our faces. Instead of every worry, instead of every trouble, instead of every plan and scheme that we have to use to get ahead instead of that if we walked around Mumbai with the glory of the Lord upon our countenance would that not make a difference would that not draw people and say I wonder what's different and then thirdly therefore since we have this ministry as we receive mercy, we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. The Bible is making such a strong statement that there isn't any situation that you can go through where you lose heart. 
that you say it's over, it's gone. I can't do this anymore. No situation. Absolutely none. So I wonder, as you think about your own lives, was it what things are there that have made you lose heart, beloved? What is it that you feel let down, that you can't go even a moment further? And maybe that's a moment that we need to take to say, Lord, here's a situation that has got me down. Lord, I don't want to lose heart over this. I want to claim this word, Lord, that I don't need to lose heart. Lord, would you take this situation? Would you take a moment? Just as we took a moment for liberty, take a moment for this as well. There anything that is making you lose heart. Oh Lord, let faith arise in each one's heart. And then fourthly, beloved, that we have renounced the things hidden because of shame. We have renounced the things hidden because of shame. Sometimes the things that are shameful or the things that have shamed us are things that we carry for an extended period of time because somehow they have been etched into our very psyche. And those are the things most difficult to get rid of. And yet, the word of God is that he can make all things, tell me, new. new, new, even that place of shame, he can make it clean. And maybe there's something shameful that you're carrying with you that you're not proud of. Or maybe something shameful has been done to you. Either way. It's possible, beloved, to take that to the Lord and say, Lord, every time I think about it, it steals my joy and my peace. Lord, would you do something? Would you clean this area? Would you take away this area of shame? And would you restore me, Lord God? I want a restoration to I want a, a reset today. There's nothing, beloved, you can do about the memory of it. But the Lord can take away the feelings that are associated with that memory, which is what causes you hurt and pain and grief. And so ask him, tell him how you feel and say, Lord, would you deal with this area for me? Go ahead. Whatever area the Lord is bringing to your mind.
So beloved, four, four areas as we move almost inexorably into meeting of 2024. That liberty is yours. That we are called to move from glory unto glory. That we don't lose heart and we don't carry the shameful things or things that have shamed us with us. That we trust that God has dealt with these areas. And if I can say this in closing, it's a reiteration of what I said about the glory of God. You know, the purpose of redemption is glory. The purpose of redemption is not heaven. That's a purpose. That's something, yes. The purpose of redeeming us is to bring glory to God. Hebrews 2.10 for it was fitting for him, that is Jesus, for whom are all things, <clears throat> and through whom are all things, in bringing many sons <coughs> to glory, many sons and daughters to glory. Beloved, I believe that that's the singular challenge that you and I have as we enter into 2024. That we allow ourselves to be changed from glory unto glory. That the glory of God rests upon our countenance. That the world will see that we are different beyond the fact that we come to worship on a Sunday morning. But in every detail, every moment that they see us, they will see the glory of God and will be drawn to him. I believe that that's the challenge for us as we head into 2024, that we allow the glory of God to be visible in our lives. We have about two or three minutes before midnight strikes and we move into 2024. Here's what I want to do. I would like to read scripture over you during these moments. Just scriptures that the Lord has laid upon my heart. That as we cross into 2024, we cross into 2024 with his word ringing upon our hearts. Is that okay? But here's the thing. I want you to be able to do what you need, want to do as well. Maybe you'd just like to come and kneel here as we cross over into 2024, and that's fine. Maybe you'd like to just stand. Maybe you'd like to just kneel where you are. That's fine as well. Whatever posture you want to take as we cross into the year 2024, I want you to feel free to do it. Is that okay? Don't worry about people at this point. Just do what you feel that you need to do. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, do not fear for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For I am the Lord, your God, who upholds your right hand, who says to you, do not fear, I will help you. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, 
they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. Why, since you are precious in my sight, since you are honored and I love you, do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and gather you from the west. I, even I, am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Beloved, do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. You who have been born by me from birth and have been carried from the womb, even to your old age I will be the same, and even to your graying years I will bear you. I have done it, and I will carry you, and I will bear you, and I will deliver you. The word of God for all of God's people, our Heavenly Father, we have crossed over into a new year. Lord, you have tarried, and 2024 is upon us. Help us, Lord, to walk in liberty. Help us to walk in such a way that the glory of your countenance rests upon us. Lord, help us not to lose heart. And help us, Lord, not to go in the area of shameful things. Thank you for the healing that you have done for us. Lord, release us into this new year with a new slate, Master. Lord, hold at bay all those things that the evil one tried to entangle us with in 2023. Write your script upon our hearts. Lord, I pray that there will not be one who leaves this place, Lord, who feels that you have not met them today. Lord, I pray for those who are troubled, who will go back to a trying situation, but they go back encouraged and inspired by your word. Lord, I pray for those who are praying for spouses. Lord, be with them. Take away any sense, Lord, of depression, despondency, impatience, and let them know that you have them, Master, that you have plans for them. Lord, I pray for every mother, Lord, every couple who is waiting for a child. And Lord, I pray that you would let them know that when the time is right, you will breathe new life, Master, into that womb. I pray for everyone who is facing a wall in front of them. Remind them, Lord, that the walls of Jericho fell. I pray, Lord, for each one who has a sickness, Lord, that they have carried for many years. Lord, it may seem fit that they will continue. Lord, may your grace be sufficient for them. And Lord, maybe there are others who have come here with ailments, afflictions, Lord, we ask that you would touch and heal and that you would restore to good health. Master, may every plan and purpose that you have for each one of us, Lord, in this sanctuary, find fulfillment in the days and months and years that are ahead of us. And we will continue, Lord, to give you glory and invite the glory of your countenance to rest upon us. For we pray this in the powerful, beautiful, majestic name of Jesus. Amen.